Hello, I'm Ray. And I'm Jenny in War Over Family Reviews. And we're going to continue our look back at our Kickstarters. Hopefully then you can avoid some of the pitfalls we made. And we've made plenty. Mm -hmm. We've made some really good decisions too. Um, so we are at Run, Fight, Die, which is a game what, we have... What year? Um, well, it was the 2015, se we've just back so, the 2015 season, so this is 2015. Of the Dice Tower is what she's talking about. That's what we're using as our in-betweens. Yep. So we don't actually still own this copy of Run, Fight, or Die um, that we did. It was supposed to be delivered in July of 2015. I think it was pretty it close was. to yeah. um, pretty close to on time. Um, we bought, he bought the Reloaded because of the new cards, but we still own the game. Yep. And we got the, we played it up until I got reloaded from someone locally for cheap, like, so. We weren't willing to respend the money. We like it. It's... We didn't it's reback one, it. It's one of the few zombie games I like. Yep. So, um, then we had Tesla versus Edison, which was a good game. It was just a little too fiddly for us. Mm -hmm. It did not work two player. It was, and they, they came up with the duel, which we'll come across later. Um... Spoiler, and we don't was, own either. <laughs> yeah, and we, there's other economic games, and, and really that's a stock market game. So we had a lot more fun with things like Airlines Europe than that. So I think we would have been more interested had it been more of a science-y game, but it wasn't. Um, then the next one was Myth, which was uh, the second edition of Myth. No, no, see, Myth, we talked about it earlier, this was just to get the reprinted materials that were in, like made the rules comprehensible and it did not help the game at all so the game and the second edition rules are gone and they're still not got the second edition materials out to backers i still get emails from them and like the company got basically dissolved so yep uh that was definitely um watch reviews and everything and they were great and then we started to find out that the people who made the game taught the game it wasn't based on rules to ru learn that from the rules or even rules videos was impossible well and i think you'd actually played it before you backed the original one but you played it with the designer no i didn't okay i um we i i we i don't remember i mean we're now talking eight years ago yeah so. But okay. Yeah. The next one was Bottom of the Ninth, which is a dice and card game of classic baseball. It wasn't bad, but it I was. I thought it was fun. Yeah, it was all this dice rolling. It was kind of like speed rolling. It wasn't bad, but it and was. And they were hiding stuff to try and get get by them. And if they got a hit, they were trying to roll dice faster than you type deal. It was fun. Yeah, it just wasn't anything. I think that that was unique mm -hmm. enough that we. Stuck it around. It wasn't our type of game. It, it wasn't didn't game. leave till last year, so it stayed in the collection for <clears throat> seven, seven eight, years, which is a long time for our, yeah. So, uh, Dexacon, and that one I think was one where I was hoping it was going to be paperback, which at that time I don't think we could get a hold right. of. Um, it wasn't, and it wasn't very good, <laughs> and so we didn't end up keeping it. I didn't. No, I thought it was good. I thought it was good, but paperback was better. Yeah. And it, it left our, our collection about the time when we got a hold of paperback. Yeah. That was, we, we were looking to do, but at that time you could only buy paperback like directly from the publisher through some weird way and we didn't, yep. we weren't willing to do that. Nope. Um, then the next one was Ion, which we actually kept for a number of years, which is kind of like a simpler version of Compounded, but mm. we like Compounded better. Not even close. Oh, because it's a card game? It's a deck builder. Yeah. Where you're you're building the the it's molecules. The same idea. They're it's not like, they're not even close to the same. I'm gonna argue with you on this one. We got rid of it because it just wasn't that great of a deck builder. Do you even remember how it played? No, I remember like you were making compounds of some sort, but that's all I remember. That hence I own the compound. So you don't remember it, but you want to tell them what it that it's like. Com no. Well, it I remember was, they were they were similar. They're similar topics. They're they are similar themes. But what you're really running into on this one is, it was an okay game at best, 
and we've started to get other genius games like um, Periodic was not a great game, but it was better at learning the elements and what they meant. And any deck builder we were finding was better. We never went back to it. Well, and I, I think that was more it, was yeah. that there was, you weren't learning any science with it, which is what we were hoping with some of yeah. these games. That one you probably could have, but it was a study tool, not a game. Um, Dragon, Dragon Punch. Punch. That one was mine. It was a, like, like each of you had ten cards in your hand and you played them. It was paper, rock, scissors. It was also, like, seven pounds, so at the time it was, like, ten dollars. Um, and I don't know. It, it was fun, but it just wasn't good. So, whoop, out it went. I don't remember playing it. I'm sure I played it with them at some point, but I don't mm -hmm. remember. Now, Mare Nostrum Empires. I remember this, because this would have been me. Yep. Um, and it probably stayed in the collection as long as it did because of me. Yep. Um, but it wasn't good two-player. Even with the two-player... Variant. And uh, unfortunately, yeah. for a game like that, which most likely is only going to hit the table two-player, it has to play well two-player. And this was one where if you played it two-player, you only got this tiny portion of the map, and it just, it, it wasn't satisfying. Um, and I also think, wasn't that a reprint of something else? It was a reprint of itself. Yeah. But with, with extra stuff. It, it was okay, and you probably could have done it with a larger group, but at the time, we didn't have a group that would do those types of games. And it really, there were better games out there. Like, it was weight-wise of a Lacerda without the, 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 without the, the really cool stuff. So, eh. Yeah, so that one was one. I mean, I, I wanted to like that one. I just couldn't manage. It yep. wasn't great to play, and we weren't getting it to the table with more, so. Yep. Um, Eminent Domain, we actually talked with them earlier because, um, I think because that was an expansion, yeah. and we don't have that anymore. Well, the game Battle Cruisers was a fun kind of paper, rock, scissors type. You had cards, and you were playing them. You had a card, I think it was one through nine. You would play one, it would do something, but you did it in order from, I think, one to nine. I can't remember at this time. We had it for a while, played it for a while, um, and we also got that one that we even took to Seward. That was Microcosm. That's down here. That yeah. was the one before. And that's what I was thinking of was Pierre. And that's where I got that. And then that had an expansion. But we finally traded that out. And part of the reason was with the group we have, Eminent Domain really went slow. And I don't know. It, I liked it a lot, but it just wasn't getting to the table. So out it went. Yep. Um, Mary Mr. the M expansion, I like that game. Have we even used the M expansion? I don't know, but I like it. It's sticking around. So we, we do own that one somewhere in the house. Um, he doesn't want to play it. It's, it's a girl game. I will play it, but it is... All you're doing is dice, really. Yeah. No, uh, I enjoy the theme of the marrying Mr. Darcy and them, because I've read all the books. But if you've not read all the books, you don't need these games. And the only reason you keep them around is because you've read all the books and you're like, ooh, I want this. So other than that, there's not much excitement I will. There. I will play that with you because it's a relatively short, take that card and dice game. However, I normally make you then play a card and dice game of my choosing, like, I don't know, um, Dice Throne, yeah. which is a better game. Oh, I'm sure it's a better game. That doesn't mean I don't like the, the theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the next one is Fleet Wharfside, which we actually still have here. Yep. I like this one a lot. I, a we, lot. we actually have owned, we've owned all the versions of Fleet. We have this one and we have the, the original. We don't have the dice Thank game anymore. Thank you. Yes, we, we got rid of that one. He didn't like it. What we discovered with any kind of roll and write of that type, and it's kind of a roll and write, you're filling in a little thing, is if it has more than one sheet, he's like, no, I just want a board. Like, make it a board game. Don't do this whole give no. me up. Three Sisters. Yes, that's I'm, the one. I'm that... willing to do that one without much fight. 
And I actually think that's why he finally convinced me as we decided, okay, he likes three sisters willing to play it. We got rid of Fleet the Dice Game. And I might might want to try and hunt down uh, Motor City just because of the theme. But mm -hmm. yeah, Wharfside is, is a fleet card game. It's really quick. It doesn't take up as much space. You're still trying to get fish to do contracts to... And this Good plays points. really well two player. Yeah, incredibly well two player. Um, both actually, Fleet doesn't play that bad. We bought this Robots expansion, yeah. and it does pretty good. Uh, two the solo player. expansion, yeah, did, or uh, two player expansion does. Um, good. But uh, that one's definitely his favorite one. It's a good travel one because it's yep. so small. Um, it takes up a little bit of table space, yeah. but it's not horrible. It's mm -hmm. not you know a Carcassonne table space. No. So. No. Um, New Bedford. Now, New Bedford was a whaling theme, and it got canceled once over stuff, and we really liked that it was a different theme, it was cool, um, but what we discovered is there was one way to win. You had to do it this way, or you couldn't. Like, there wasn't any choice, because if you yep. made any choice other than this one path... You were you, going to lose. You, could, you, you didn't even stand a chance. Like, it wasn't like, oh, I'm losing by a few points. No, you got annihilated. Like, there was one path, and if there wasn't the bank in the game, forget about it. Someone better build that bank, or you were all screwed. Uh -huh. And that was disappointing. Like, I, I need more choice, especially in this, which is a city-building yep. game, and you wanted to build your little city, your port, but if you there did that, There no, was no reason lost. to. Yeah. If you focused on that, which was what we were excited about, you lost. Um, and you weren't even close. Like, you and didn't you get had, any... you had to whale, and you had to whale a certain pattern and if someone could stop you from doing that pattern too you were going to lose yeah it, and it was, was just yeah. yeah and it so it was it was disappointing like that game yep. needed to go back to play testing or something because the theme was cool and different unique but there was just no choice and we were so disappointed in that one yep. so um neoprene terrain, terrain for i Warner still Street. i still have that i so. still use it actually for almost all my miniature games battle tech Okay, that was actually a computer game, and I played it, not as much as I should have, but I still have it, and I, I, I mean, for a $25 investment, it's fun, I enjoy it, it plays quite literally like the, the miniatures game, very good, it's got a story, I liked it a lot, however, I don't play a lot of video games because I have to do it out away from you and at night is the only time I really do stuff like that on my own. Yeah. So oh, right. I forgot to grab Islebound. That's okay. The next one is Islebound, which we love. Uh, He's gonna go get it. Um Islebound is one of our both of our I think it's in both of our top ten or twenty games. Um and this is probably our favorite Ryan Locker. This and we talked about Artifest Inc. last time and those are probably our two favorite Ryan Locker uh, games. Artifact Inks has dropped for me. Okay. I I actually like Rome. Mm, yeah. So, huh. but um, this one is really cool. Yeah. You lay out the board and you're going between ports, but you have this choice of whether you attack or you make friends. And both work well. It works really well two player, but we've played it with more and it works well pretty much every player yeah. count. And it's just really cool, and it just feels you're, like there's lots of fun stuff to you're do. You're building a city with cards, your diplomacy or violence. Yeah, what do you want to do? You're moving your boats around. It's fun. And, and the artwork is Ryan Lockhart, so it's just gorgeous. Yep, and there's all these quests, and they move around, so like there's yeah. constantly a new one. Um, but yep. yeah. We haven't played it in a while, though. It's a little bit of a setup because it's all the different tiles, and so it takes a little bit to set up, but it's certainly not as bad as some no. other games. So, um, And then the next one is Great Dinosaur Rush, which this is we bought for our youngest son, and yeah. he does like it. I think we like it more. Yeah, we, we both, and you're collecting dinosaur bones, which are different colored, sticks. just little sticks. And then you've got these blueprints of different dinosaurs, and you have a little screen, and then when it's time, you're trying to rearrange them because the different colors represent different parts of the dinosaur, and trying to make something closest to get the most points yeah. in your dinosaur. Um, and it's really fun to see what you make and the different things you construct. Um, and it's one of those that since you've got blueprints, you don't get too stuck in AP because it's usually pretty clear, I want to try to do this. At the same time, there's a lot of things you can do, and it... It turned out, and, and you build it in in secret. 
So no one knows what you're going to have out. It, it's a blast. And you're picking, you're digging the dinosaur bones and there's things you can do to mess with your, your like the things around you, which could mess with it, your opponents, but you get notoriety. And if you do the, enough of that, you're gonna lose points at the end of the game. So there's a take that that you can use, but you have to be careful about it. And like you can go, you know, like use dynamite, but then you lose stuff in the process if you don't do it the right way. There's ways that you can like PR yourself, make yourself look better. So there's definitely this, yep. there's more than just that. Like on the face of it, it's a very simple game, but there's a lot of pieces that make it more in depth. So you don't feel like you're just playing in a basic intro game. Um, I wouldn't consider an intro game. Is it a heavy no. game? No. No. But there's a lot of pieces to it, and you can feel a pretty good amount it's, of strategy in it. It's a next step game. Yep. Yeah, so, well, and then we're to Dice Tower Season 12, so we will stop there. 2016. All right, I'm going to stop. Have good gaming, and everybody. Um, Let's well, right, Memorial Day weekend 2023. Yeah. Uh, remember all the people who've died for us. Yep.